Today's song is Jesus, I Have My Doubts by John Foreman. Lead singer of the band Switchfoot, this is one of Foreman's solo works, one that received attention for its honest and thought-provoking lyrics. Foreman talks about how the song is his way of coming to God with his questions and doubts, believing that God is bigger than all of them and is able to answer and to assure him of his presence during his struggle. Since the song is a personal outcry and essentially a conversation between Foreman and Christ, there are no actual Bible references, but we certainly see Foreman's experience reflected in Scripture. In order to explore the nuances of the song, I broke down the doubts mentioned in the titular line into three different categories that seem to be expressed here. These three types of doubt revolve around sin, pain, and God. So the first type of doubt is related to sin. The song says, Jesus, I'm sorry about last night. Jesus, we both know my child. The lines appear to imply a recent struggle with temptation the previous night, ultimately ending in failure. He's now apologizing and expressing how he did his best to resist. This is something we all face as Christians. David, the man chosen to be king by God, a man after God's own heart, fell into covetousness and lust in a moment of weakness. Even the Apostle Paul, minister of the gospel, talked about his struggle with sin. Although we are saved, we must continually contend with our sin. It's inside of us. Paul calls it our flesh. The song may be referring to this when it goes, in the darkness in my heart so strong. As long as we are in this world, we have the flesh to battle against. This battle happens daily, and we fight it with the decisions we make. We can choose to obey or to disobey. We can choose to spend time with God and build up our relationship with him and our brothers and sisters in Christ, or we can value the world and the temporary pleasures and futile pursuits it offers. We are told that if we resist the devil, he will flee from us, but we must always be vigilant so that when our time comes, we can say we fought the good fight. Until then, we must don the armor of God to resist the temptations of the devil. We must also remember to sanctify ourselves with regular repentance, as David did after his sin. This is not for the washing of our sins, as that was done through Christ at the moment of our salvation, but for a continual cleansing to stay on the right path. It will always be easier to give in. We're warring against natural urges, but that's our old nature. We've been given a new nature one that is honoring to God, and ultimately, what matters at the end of your life is what God thinks. If you're saved, you should pursue the things of God, not of man. The second kind of doubt is regarding pain. The song says, Jesus, has the world gone mad? Jesus, feels like the world in pieces. One of the most commonly posed questions to Christians is how can God exist with such pain and suffering in the world? And if he does exist, how can you call him good or serve him or love him, knowing what he allows to take place here? The amount of pain in the world cannot be understated. Each person is touched by it. The song even mentions, but the pain goes on and, on and, on. and I'm sure we can all empathize with this line. The truth is, the world is broken. We are not living in the world God intended us to live in. When he made Adam and Eve, he gave them a garden full of peace. Peace with nature, peace with each other, and peace with God. But when they sinned, that peace was shattered. We are living in the aftermath of that, a world full of disaster and parasites, a human race with mutations and viruses, and a broken people with sinful natures and proclivities for unimaginable evil. This is the world that Jesus came to save. The Bible says that just as how Adam's sin brought death to all men, so would Christ's obedience bring us life. God didn't leave us in our state, sinners on the road to hell. He saw us, loved us, and sent his son to die for us. 
This is why we say that God is good. This is why we say that God is love. In the cross of Christ, we see the ultimate sacrifice of the innocent dying for the guilty. It's only when we can admit our guilt that we are ready to be saved. He didn't come to save good people, but to save sinners. This is the cure for pain. Not physical pain, it's deeper than that. Our life here on earth is like a vapor. It's here and then it's gone. Eternity is forever, and that's the life we should be looking forward to. Christ died to provide us everlasting life, and until then, those who have put their faith in him and turned from their sins will inhabit a broken world as strangers in this land, looking forward to our real home. And just like we fight against our flesh until Christ returns, the world at large will remain in chaos until that time. Pain will persist until pain is no more. The final doubt that I think the song is referring to is about God himself. The chorus says, This is similar to a story in the Bible where a man asks Jesus to heal his son. Christ tells him that it's possible if he believes. The man says with tears, Lord, I believe. Help my unbelief. We can experience this as Christians, where we lack the faith to trust that God knows what's best and is in control. We can ask questions like the ones in the bridge. Are you there? Can you hear me? Do you care? Are you near me? Cause I'm scared and I'm weary. We can fall for the lie of thinking that God has abandoned his people. We should be careful as there are powers in this world that will try to shake our faith but we should encourage each other in the right path daily. There are many psalms that cry out to God for help, just like this song. And there are other psalms that conclude, especially in our time of need, that God is our rescue. The Bible says that we should ask God for wisdom when we feel as though we're lacking. Allow him to fill our hearts and minds so we are completely occupied with him so we don't fall prey to the doubts that the world, our flesh, and the devil seek to build in our minds to destroy our foundation. Don't be cast about by fickle feelings. Stand firm, knowing that as long as our foundation is Christ, we cannot be moved. What the song lacks is that closure, the biblical answers to our doubts and worries, but I understand that the song is meant to be open-ended and thought-provoking. So hopefully I provided some answers here. Finally, let's take a look at the uniqueness score. The bridge is half the length of the verses and chorus, so it'll be considered as half a stanza in the formula. Plugging in the numbers, multiplying the unique word ratio by the unique stanza ratio, as well as the ratio of entire song repeats, the uniqueness score comes out to 35%, which is a poor score. The low score is due mostly to the repetition of lyrics throughout the song, Every single stanza repeats at least one line, either from itself or from another stanza. So, John Foreman's Jesus, I Have My Doubts, a song about struggling with unbelief as a believer, offering no answers and occasionally repeating itself. Are they just lyrics? Decide for yourself. And let me know in the comments. <laughs>